Hi everybody and welcome to Deconstructing Unschooling. I'm Amy Milstein and today we're going to talk about the job market. One of the things that people ask me when I tell them how my kids learn, that they're unschoolers and that all their learning is through life experiences, is well, do you ever worry that they won't be able to get a job, they won't have the skills they need, or they won't be successful? This of course is coming from a very narrow definition of a success and what kind of jobs we're talking about. We have been very, very well indoctrinated over the years into the idea that success is only achieved by people with uh, degrees and at first it was a high school diploma and now it's a diploma plus a four-year college and, and the super successful people have advanced degrees. In theory, these degrees give you opportunities to be in positions where you're going to make more money. And that, then, is supposed to equal success. Well, I disagree with that for many people. Some people whose passion lies in medicine or law or in becoming a professor, for them, that path through college, university, and getting degrees makes sense. But it doesn't make sense for most of the population, I would venture to say. So will unschoolers have what they need to be successful? I think the answer is a, is a resounding yes. The reason for that is that when you are not taught that education is something given to you by others, when you are not taught that only certain subjects are worthy of your time and study, when you are encouraged to follow your interests however disjointed or disconnected they may seem or for however brief a time you may be interested in them before moving on to something else, you are far more likely to pursue a life doing something that you love and that you feel passionate about. And that, in my opinion, is success. Or if you make enough to support yourself and you're doing something that makes you happy, that is a resounding success, in my opinion. I want to mention a book right now, which is Michael Ellsberg's Education of Millionaires. As Michael says, the title is really more of a marketing thing because the book is not about only about how to make a million dollars, how to be a millionaire. Uh, Michael went and interviewed hundreds of people who are successful in what they do. And some of them are very well-known names and some of them are not people you would have heard of, but they're all very successful. And every single person to a person, whether or not they went to college, some of them did, some of them dropped out, some of them never went, but every one of them said that the things that made them successful in their careers and in their lives, they didn't learn in college to a person. And I think this is very telling. School does not teach you how to be successful in life. It teaches a very narrow area of expertise. And if your interests align with that area, you're good to go. But what has happened is, and this is nothing new, you all know this, it's been in the news over and over and over for the past few years, is we have all these college graduates with degrees that are useless. They can't get jobs in those fields. They don't even particularly maybe want jobs in those fields. They studied that because they were told that was the path to success. But that's not what makes someone successful. So I think that unschoolers have a step up in this because our kids are not being trained to learn there's only one path to success. Some unschoolers are very academically oriented. I know two who are in university now, one is pre-law, one is studying marine biology. They're doing great, they love it. I know others who start their own businesses. I know a great ceramic artist, Brenda McBroom, hi Brenda, in Asheville. She makes beautiful work and she has written about running her own business and what that is and how that works. There are many, many paths to success. 
I also want to mention a story I just heard, my mom actually told me, about a girl, uh, a daughter of a friend of hers, who went through high school with the local public high school, did a year of community college, you know, doing all the right things, not going to an expensive school, you know, going to a local school where she could live at home and not rack up a ton of debt. But after a year, she said she just didn't know why she was there. She was there because she thought that's what she was supposed to do. But she wasn't enjoying it. She didn't know what she wanted to be. And so she went to Cummins Engine Company, which is a local uh, business in my hometown, and she got a job working the, in the factory, working the production line, third shift, and she absolutely loves it. She loves it. She's been doing that. She loves the work. She loves the hours. She loves the pay. And I think that's fantastic. We should value that work every bit as much as we value someone who wants to become a neurophysicist and needs lots of higher degrees to do it. This girl had the courage to say, I don't think that path is for me. I'm going to go to work. So now she's making money doing something she really enjoys. Will she do this for the rest of her life? I don't know. Maybe she will. And if she does and loves it, that's fantastic. That to me is a successful life. So to sum this up, you can go to school and you can be successful. I'm not saying that school means you won't be successful. But I sometimes think it's harder to hone in on what you really want to do because you're taught that there's only one real way to success. That's not true at all. There are many, many ways to success. I always also mention, in fact, I just saw this morning the guy who won the world championship yo-yo competition. This guy is amazing. And in my head I'm thinking, can you imagine some kid walking in to his parents or to his school and saying, you know what I really want to do is be the world champion yo-yo guy. But, but then he did it and he has sponsors and he travels the world and he does exactly what he loves to do. How great is that? How many of us would want that for our kids? So I think it's important not to overlook interests that aren't academically oriented. And so one of the challenges of a, as a parent of an unschooler is to let go of those ideas that there's only one road to success. I think if you can do that and if you can kind of remove yourself from the pressures that you hear every day about what kids should be learning and how they need to be given an education and how they have to have a degree or they won't succeed, if you can try to divorce yourself from that talk and really focus in on your kids and see what it is that they are interested in. And by the way, when they're nine or 10 or 12, they don't have to know what their life's work will be. Most of us aren't gonna know what we wanna do from a very young age. Some people do, I always think that's amazing. But most people don't, that's okay. Your kid at 13, at 14 doesn't have to know what their career path will be. It's okay if they seem to bounce around from one interest to the next. Eventually they'll find it, because they know they can try things without fear of having to make it the thing. And then, if they don't like it, they'll be criticized for giving it up. Luckily, that's not a part of the unschooling world. So I hope this gives you a little bit of encouragement if you're kind of looking at your kid and, and you've had people asking you if they're going to be able to succeed. I think the answer is a very loud and resounding yes. So that's it for today, except since we're talking about jobs, <laughs> my shout out today is to the genius behind Apple computers, Steve Jobs. I actually went to see the movie last night that they've done about him and it's great. But it, it only touches a small portion, of course, of the things that he's done. Steve Jobs was an amazing guy who didn't believe that everyone needed a four-year degree, unlike certain other computer magnates who were in the news a lot lately. Um, he believed that people should learn what they were interested in, and that's why he dropped out of Reed College, but hung around campus and took the classes he liked, including calligraphy. I, I love the story. Calligraphy seems very 
you know, what are you going to do with calligraphy, right? You're going to make your living writing calligraphy? Probably not. But he loved the beauty of it. And later, that is why the Macintosh computers were the first ones to offer a variety of fonts and beautiful writing on the screen. That came as directly as a result of his auditing a calligraphy class at Reed College. So he's a great example of how following the things you love to do, no matter how disconnected they may seem, can lead you to a life of passion in your work. And he eventually discovered how to balance that out with his personal life as well, which he wasn't very good at in the beginning. So that's it. Thank you, Steve Jobs, for so many things. Thank you all for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.